Asia webinar series for 2021. Um, today we will be um, looking at International Ideas um, report on uh, online violence against female politicians in Fiji. Um, I'll just start by introducing Adi Yaman, uh, who is the Senior Program Manager for International Ideas um, Asia and the Pacific Regional Program and Country Manager for the Fiji and Mongolia programs. Uh, Aman. Uh, thank you very much, Ramitesh. Hello, everyone. Um, I'd like to begin to by acknowledging the Nganawal people, traditional custodians of the land on which I speak from today, and pay my respects to the elders past and present. Uh, welcome to the second webinar in International Ideas Democratic Development in Melanesia series. Um, International IDEA as the only intergovernmental organization with the sole mandate of supporting sustainable democracy has been a strong supporter of women's participation and representation in politics. Uh, we've been a partner of the I Know Politics Partnership, Global Partnership. We've got um, the Agenda Quota database for more than two decades now. Uh, we published the Women in Parliament Handbook, Designing for Equality, Electoral System Design Guide, um, and uh, many others. Now, more recently, um, the rise of social media and how it's been used in the Melanesian region, particularly in Fiji, has led us to study the, its impact on women politicians. Such a study can help us and others um, understand the new challenges current and aspiring women politicians face. Therefore, we decided to work with Memo 98, a civil society organization that has the technical expertise and experience to conduct such a study. Uh, Rasto Kuzel, uh, its executive director, is here with us today uh, to present the main findings of the study. Uh, the report itself is still um, under finalization and will be released very soon. Uh, so many thanks, Rasto, for um, waking up early to do this for us. Um, I know the time difference is not uh, very uh, helpful, uh, but thank you very much for doing it. Um, as far as we know, uh, this is an unprecedented study, and we intend to keep on building um, uh, upon it for the foreseeable future. On that note, uh, I hand the screen back to Romitesh. Dinaka uh, Thank you, Adi. Um, I'll just introduce the presenters and the order of presentations that uh, will follow in this uh, webinar. Uh, so uh, as uh, Adi mentioned, uh, Rasta Kuzel would be presenting the main findings of the research. Uh, Rasta is from Slovakia um, and he's a media analyst and expert with over two decades of international experience. Um, since 1998, 1998 um, Rasto has been the executive director of Memo 98, uh, a media institution with extensive experience of delivering media monitoring on behalf of international institutions, uh, and as well as providing assistance to civil society groups. So Rasto's, uh, Rasto and Memo 98 have been involved with international idea in uh, conducting this research and analyzing the res uh, results. And then after Rosto, we have um, two discussions from Fiji. Uh, we have Endan Balelevuka, who's the Online Safety Commissioner uh, for the Online Safe Safety Commission in Fiji. Um, she's a lawyer by profession. Um, she's also uh, very passionate about youth empowerment and empowerment of young women in Fiji. And the second, um, um, discussant is Losana Turaviravi uh, from the Fiji Women's Rights Movement, who is currently the acting team leader for intergenerational women in leadership program at the Fiji Women's Rights Movement. Um, she's uh, been within the women's movement and the feminist movement since 2009, so very long, extensive engagement. And she's also been very uh, active with the Fiji Women's Forum and the Fiji Young Women's Forum. And she's participated uh, in various uh, spaces in national uh, 
forums and regional and international forums. So I'll hand over to Rusto, uh, Rusto to take us through the findings of the research. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, thanks a lot for this uh, kind of invitation. As, uh, as Adi already mentioned, uh, it's a very early morning here in Slovakia. So uh, please, uh, first of all, bear with me. Uh, I hope that uh, you know I will be able to uh, to go through this uh, presentation um, without any interruptions. Um, but um, but um, it was um, a very um, uh, a very interesting experience for 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 our team. Uh, indeed, uh, as it as it has already been mentioned, it is a very uh, sort of uh, unique and and pilot. Uh, study that we have uh, conducted, um, but uh, at the same time, I think it's 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 a very important uh, topic because we see that um, this really uh, has uh, come with the advent of uh, social media. That um, particularly, perhaps at the beginning, um, uh, we saw rather positive uh, uh, sort of. Um, positive aspects of, uh, of social media involvement uh, in political campaigns, but, um, but certainly um, online violence against women has uh, surfaced as, as one of the negative uh, aspects. And, um, and so uh, perhaps without further ado, let me uh, share uh, the screen. If you can just... Uh, confirm that you can see the screen now is it visible yes very good uh, so um maybe uh, before i start uh i will just mention a few words about uh, memo 98 uh, so um as, uh, as it has already been uh, explained we are indeed uh, looking at, um, at, at uh, election campaigns in particular. So for a couple of decades, we have been uh, mainly focusing on, um, on, on the media coverage of elections. Um, obviously, uh, when we started uh, 20 years ago, we were mainly focusing on um, so-called traditional media uh, coverage. Uh, but um, as uh, social media has evolved. Um, so since about uh, 2015, we have started looking also at uh, the social media coverage of, of elections. And uh, with this, obviously, we looked at uh, phenomena such as disinformation. And um, in that sense, uh, we also, we have been working with, um, with, uh, with journalists. We believe that, you know, the best, uh, response to uh, disinformation around elections is, is good quality journalism. So we have been also providing uh, trainings and assistance to, to journalists. Uh, and in that sense, um, we also looked at how media uh, cover uh, different uh, vulnerable groups and minorities. And I think it's in this uh, sort of aspect of our work that, uh, that we have uh, in the past also uh, done monitoring in the different stereotyping of, uh, of media vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, vulnerable groups. And in that context also, uh, we looked at uh, the media coverage of, of, uh, of women uh, in, in, in some other countries, but certainly, uh, you know, monitoring of, uh, of online violence against women is, is, is uh, really for the, for the first time that we have, uh, we have done. Um, uh actually let me i think i have uh just just a second uh i think i have the wrong uh the wrong presentation uh opened on my computer so apologies for this i will open the correct one Okay, here we go.
I apologize for this. Um, didn't realize it. But uh, now it should be. It should be there. Yeah, this is it. I hope you can still see my screen. Uh, so um, basically, uh, these uh, little dots are uh, those uh, countries where we have worked uh, so far. So it's about uh, 56 uh, countries and um, and um, certainly, um, as I mentioned, uh, it was uh, for the first time that we looked at uh, at uh, social media coverage of uh, of women. And um, basically, at the beginning of the of the research, we looked at um, what social media are important uh, in the context of Fiji. And so um, we identified uh, Facebook as um, as being the most important uh, social media in the country. Uh, so um, that is why uh, we decided to to look at Facebook. In particular, you know, um, when we look at the, the most uh, recent figures uh, from a data a portal, which is um, an organization which maps uh, social media. Globally, um, it, uh, it, it is uh, clear that um, around 570,000 people basically look uh, uh, at Facebook. Um, and so in comparison, for example, with uh, Instagram, it's, uh, it's about 140,000 people and about uh, less than 15,000 people are on Twitter. So clearly uh, this is why we decided to uh, to focus on uh, on Facebook, um, I should say that um, in terms of the methodology, um, Memo uh, has uh, certain tools for uh, so-called data mining, data scrapping. So we have we have unique access uh, to Facebook uh, thanks to CrowdTangle. Uh, so thanks to CrowdTangle, we can uh, we can see. Um, public uh, accounts and public groups on Facebook, and we have historic access to, to this data. Uh, so this is uh, also one of the reasons why we, uh, in this particular study, looked at um, uh, public groups, public uh, accounts, whereas clearly in connection with this topic, uh, it, 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 it could have been and it would have been perhaps interesting to also uh, look at uh, private groups um, where perhaps uh, you know uh, the language uh, of, uh, of of um, of uh, the language and and the, the 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 online treatment in general could also uh, be probably very interesting to the research, but in this particular uh, study we only uh, looked at uh, public accounts and and public uh, public uh, groups. In terms of uh, the monitoring periods, uh, so we decided to uh, to research three different periods um, so it was um, it was a period of a couple of months uh, in uh, in uh, 15 September and 14 November 2018 uh, we also looked at uh, 15 November 13th of January 2019 and the last period was uh, 15 October 13 December uh, 2020 uh, obviously, the idea was uh, to uh, to look at uh, the data retrospectively, particularly in a connection of of the election. So, a uh, couple of months uh, before the 2018 elections and and after, and then uh, just to have a comparison in uh, 2020 and to see how um, the situation has evolved. Uh, we uh, focused on uh, 17 public pages of uh, women politicians. Uh, we focused on 28 uh, public pages of, uh, of 24 men politicians. We just wanted to, uh, to be able to have uh, some kind of comparison. Um, and so we uh, decided to not only look at, uh, at uh, women politicians, but also 
uh, and uh, we, we decided to look at men politicians. We also looked at a couple of pages of uh, social media influencers, one public page of, uh, of the media and uh, six uh, public groups. In terms of uh, the qualitative criteria, um, we basically decided to define uh, uh, the the content um, which you know we would uh, we would define as problematic, uh, which would contain uh, certain aspects, uh, such as um, you know uh, it would be it would be sexist uh, against uh, female or against male uh, um, uh, male politicians. So under this, it would be any any comment that is uh, demeaning, discriminatory, abusive, or derogatory towards an individual group because of uh, gender or gender presentation. Uh, so this uh, included uh, particularly comments on the appearance uh, that imply a, a gendered element. Uh, we also uh, saw that it's important to look at uh, the content which is, which is racist, which is ethnicity based. Again, uh, the same criteria against uh, both uh, a female or male uh, politicians. We also looked at, uh, at threats. And here we basically uh, define threats as uh, any comment directed towards an individual or group uh, that articulates an intention to cause injury or result in a reasonable fear or of harm. Uh, this included threats of sexualized, sexualized violence uh, directed towards individuals. Uh, another criteria was uh, political victimization. Here, uh, we looked at any abusive or threatening comments targeting the political beliefs, ideology, or affiliation of an individual. And finally, uh, the last, the fifth um, criteria was uh, uh, basically uh, called uh, personal or individual abuse. Here, we were looking at uh, comments directed at the individual personal characteristics, uh, appearance, family life, or other non-political aspects of their life. So um, in terms of uh, the actual uh, findings, so in all three periods, um, I think we analyzed uh, roughly uh, 2,603 uh, posts uh, on Facebook um, and about uh, 99,000 comments. So when I say we, it was a team of, uh, of uh, media analysts uh, that we um, hired uh, or, or that actually worked with us, uh, rather uh, all senior analysts who have uh, had previous experience uh, with working with us. And, um, and basically uh, they looked into uh, all these, all these uh, posts. So in, in this post, um, we identified um, uh, about 11% uh, of, of these posts as uh, having this uh, problematic uh, content. Uh, and uh, what was interesting uh, was that uh, actually this problematic content was mostly present uh, in comments, as you can see on the chart uh, on the right side. So about 70% it was uh, in comments. About 13% uh, uh, it was uh, present in posts themselves, and uh, the rest, about 17%, it was uh, in both uh, uh, posts and comments. Uh, what was uh, another interesting finding was that um, basically uh, we found uh, that um, uh, that of this uh, uh, problematic uh, content. Uh, the the highest uh, number which was uh, about or the highest portion rather about 47.2 uh, uh, percent was uh, in the form of uh, political victimization where abusive or threatening comments uh, targeted political beliefs ideology or affiliation um, and so uh, it was uh, particularly uh, we saw that it was targeted uh, mainly against uh, uh, male politicians. Uh, so this was, uh, uh, you know, in about 323 comments, uh, it was targeting uh, uh, male politicians. Uh, at the same time, 
what is I think very important to mention is that uh, uh, about four times uh, more problematic content related uh, to Facebook pages um, of, of male politicians. Uh, so about 133 cases in comparison with their female counterparts. Uh, so interestingly, uh, the men were subjected more to online violence than, than women. However, uh, it is important to note that a great majority of the problematic comments towards women politicians are in the, in the sexist uh, category. So they were mainly focusing on, on their appearance rather than uh, at the sort of uh, uh, at, the, at, the, at the content of, 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 of the political uh, aspects of, of, uh, of, of, of what, they, uh, what, they, what they basically focused on. And um, also um, what was very important finding was that uh, we saw when we looked at the actual posts by, uh, by male and female politicians, we actually saw that in 35 cases, uh, the, the male uh, politicians were actually uh, uh, perpetrators of, uh, of some of those uh, categories of problematic content uh, that, uh, that we described, whereas we did not see any case where uh, where a female politician would uh, would use uh, such uh, such problematic language. Um, when we look at uh, the actual uh, categories, um, Arresto, what we yes, sorry, Adi here. Uh, yes. A participant requests that you uh, make the presentation full screen because some uh -huh. of the texts are too small. Okay. Uh, I can see. Maybe it, you can uh, hit the green, the green button can, on the left, top left. Right? On my uh, screen, it is full, but uh, let oh. me let me try to to do it perhaps uh, once again. Is it uh, is it the same now, or is it better? Better. It's better, yeah. Okay, okay, very good. Uh, apologies uh, for that. Uh, so um, basically, um, as I said um, um, on this chart uh, here, uh, you can actually uh, see uh, that um, that uh, when we looked at all uh, three periods. Uh, uh, among monitored categories, uh, Facebook pages of male politicians produced the highest number, almost half of all identified problematic cases. Uh, so this included, uh, as I already mentioned, the posts of uh, male politicians, but also uh, on, in the comments. Um, uh, so there were about 133 posts out of uh, the total 285 uh, posts that we identified as problematic. Uh, so roughly about uh, 46%. Uh, percent. Uh, the problematic content was on, on male, uh, male politicians' uh, accounts uh, in comparison with uh, public groups, uh, which was the second uh, category where we identified around 98 problematic posts. And then um, you can see that uh, the, the following categories were uh, female media and and then uh, the influencers. Um, okay. The next um, chart was uh, we saw a very similar picture when it comes. Uh, so the, the the previous one was uh, uh, looking at the posts, and uh, this one basically looks at uh, the comments uh, that we that we saw. Um, on on those posts, so you can see that there was a, a very a similar pattern. Uh, so when it comes to these um, uh, different categories uh, that we that we uh, looked at, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, political victimization against male politicians was uh, was the the category with highest appearance of that problematic content. Uh, the second category was uh, sexist against uh, female 
uh, then uh, political victimization against uh, female and personal abuse against female politicians, and then followed by racist, ethnically, nationally based uh, uh, sort of content against uh, female politicians. Um, and then the last uh, categories were uh, personal abuse against male and uh, uh, racist and ethnically nationally based content against uh, male politicians. Um, and uh, we saw a roughly similar type of uh, structure when it comes uh, to the to the comments of uh, of of those uh, on on those uh, on those uh, posts. And so I will uh, move on, and I wanted to uh, say that uh, particularly the problematic content. Uh, that we saw was uh, after after the male uh, politicians, uh, we saw it uh, mainly in public groups. Uh, so we identified uh, public groups, and I will um, I will also come back to that a uh, little bit later. How we identified uh, this this uh, this public groups and accounts, but uh, but certainly uh, it was uh, it was quite uh, important to look at uh, public groups and here. Again, we saw uh, the, the biggest appearance uh, was uh, political victimizations against male, uh, and then personal abuse against female politicians, and so on and, and so forth. Um, and here we identified uh, roughly 98 um, posts uh, which uh, which were problematic as uh, either problematic in the in the in the actual posts or in comments or in both. Uh, posts and, and comments. Um, and uh, when I look at uh, the actual uh, comments, again, we, we, saw, uh, we saw a similar, similar picture uh, there. Um, I want to mention that um, uh, through the uh, three periods, uh, uh, we, we saw that there were uh, particularly uh, three cases which, uh, which we uh, assessed or evaluated. Uh, and this was, uh, these were uh, three cases against prominent uh, women politicians. Uh, so uh, the most uh, sort of visible case was the case of uh, Ms. Uh, Lenora uh, Kere, Kere Tabua. I apologize if I uh, mispronounced her name. Um, and then uh, there were a couple of more cases. Uh, it was also the case of uh, Ms. Uh, Linda Tabua and the case of Ridi Damodar that uh, that we saw uh, during this uh, this uh, this period. And uh, in particular, I think what uh, what is important uh, to mention that uh, uh, whenever there was um, a critical or favorable post uh, about. Uh, male politicians, the discussions usually revolved around the party lines. Uh, um, uh, and, and usually, uh, if attacked, usually the party line was being used under the fire. By contrast, uh, women were frequently targeted on a personal level, like in the case of uh, these uh, mentioned uh, women. So for example, in the case of, uh, of a member of parliament, Ridi Damoda, uh, the question was evolving around how much did she pay uh, to her to her housekeeper. Uh, this was discussed, uh, you know, countrywide or based on uh, on her physical appearance, such as uh, commenting on uh, Ms. Linda Stabuya's dress that she wore for the opening of the parliament after the 2018 elections. But again, as I said, uh, the most prominent uh, case uh, involved. Uh, uh, Miss uh, Lenora um, and and her and sort of rumors about the existence of the uh, sort of alleged sex video uh, that that uh, that was supposed to involve her. So these were the three cases that uh, were definitely very much visible uh, through the whole uh, through the whole study. Now, um, one one thing that we also looked at was. Um, what uh, what I would describe as as, as network mapping. Uh, so basically, we uh, looked at uh, at certain uh, keywords or URLs 
Uh, and so uh, we basically mined the data uh, from Facebook, and then uh, we looked at uh, certain um, pieces of, uh, of problematic content, uh, and then we tried to see how it is disseminated um, uh, further uh, on these on these public groups and uh, and these public accounts. And uh, so, for example, in the case of uh, of Miss uh, Lenora, uh, this is uh, basically how the content about her. Uh, was disseminated and 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 here on this uh, on this chart it is uh, basically uh, you can see uh, different colors and uh, you can probably see uh, the public groups uh, which uh, we researched such as uh, Fiji News Link or Fiji Exposed Forum. Uh, so by this early identification, this helped us to actually see. Uh, where this content is disseminated. So the bigger the bubbles are, uh, the more uh, this content about her was uh, was disseminated. And this helped us to basically identify those important uh, actors, uh, so to say, of, uh, of, of disseminating uh, this content. So this, this is something that we also used uh, for the first time, this sort of network, network mapping and and this was something that helped us to uh, to, to sort of identify uh, who are the actors. So, um, in conclusion, um, I will just um, do some summary of uh, of our findings. So, um, again, uh, by comparison with their male colleagues, female politicians are treated in a less serious manner on Facebook, as comments to their posts touch upon their appearance and on. Uh, personal qualities rather than commenting or analyzing their politics. So apart from the smear campaigning against uh, women politicians, there were many stereotypical comments uh, uh, such as, uh, you know, uh, how beautiful, how nice uh, they are and, and similar ones. 11% uh, of the posts, uh, as I already mentioned, were found uh, problematic. Uh, so, and these uh, all contained uh, those five different criteria uh, being sexist, racist, threatening, uh, politically victimizing, or uh, personal abuse. And um, most problematic content, uh, almost 70%, was identified within the comments by the general public rather than by politicians, uh, the media, or uh, the research influencers. Um, so of the 285 problematic posts, uh, there were 38 posts that uh, contained the problematic language in the text of the post, 49 posts where uh, this was um, contained uh, in the posts uh, or in the comments, and 189 posts that contained the problematic language only in the comments. Uh, we found the 90 problematic posts in the first period, uh, that we monitored 63 in the second period and as many as 132 problematic posts uh, in the last period, uh, which basically suggested that the frequency of the problematic posts uh, has been growing. Uh, whenever there was a critical or favorable post about male politicians, the discussion, as I already mentioned, usually revolved around the party lines. Um, and so it was uh, basically the, 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 the party line which was being used uh, uh, under fire. And by contrast, uh, women uh, were frequently targeted on a personal level, like in those mentioned uh, cases, uh, based on, uh, on uh, physical appearance. Uh, and, 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 and again, uh, as I said, the most prominent case was certainly the case of, uh, of, of, of uh, Miss Lenora, which was, uh, by the way, also one of the reasons why we started uh, this, uh, this study. Uh, there was uh, no problematic content identified uh, in the post of uh, women politicians compared to 35 such problematic posts on their male uh, counterparts. And uh, overall, uh, it was four times more problematic content related to Facebook pages of uh, male politicians in comparison with their female uh, counterparts. Therefore, interestingly, um, and I will uh, conclude uh, here, uh, the men were more subjected to online violence than women. 
However, it is important to note that a great ma majority of the problematic comments uh, towards women politicians are in the sexist uh, category. And, and perhaps the very last uh, conclusion, uh, Facebook pages of male politicians produce the highest number of all identified problematic cases with the problematic content ident identified either in the post in both posts and comments or only within the comments. Uh, so 133 posts out of the total 285 uh, posts. And uh, on, the, on the other side, Facebook pages of female politicians produced 32 problematic posts, uh, which was about uh, 11%. Uh, but again, this was mainly applying uh, in terms of the comments. So. Uh, Maybe I will uh, stop it here. Um, uh, obviously, there will be uh, more in information that you will be able to uh, to get uh, in uh, in the report, uh, which is which is coming uh, very soon. Uh, but this was uh, perhaps just to share uh, the main findings uh, from our reports, and obviously, I will be very happy to answer any questions uh, a little bit later. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for presenting the main findings. Um, just um, housekeeping, uh, if there's any questions that you want to ask, uh, all the questions can be asked after the presentation by the two discussants, uh, Endan and uh, Losana. Um, also, uh, either in the chat function, you can use the chat function or you can raise your hand once all the presentations have been done. Um, also, um, to note that Endan uh, has a um, commitment at three o'clock. Uh, so she'll present for five minutes and then she'll stay around until three o'clock. So if you need any questions specifically for N, uh, use the chat function and then we can proceed to ask that. So I'll hand over to N uh, for her presentation. Hi, Mbula, everyone. Sorry, you'll, I'll apologize. My internet connection is um, not doing so well today and the joys of technology. So my video will be off for a majority of this, but um, Mbula Vinaka, and thank you, Mr. Kujul, for your presentation um, on the initial findings of this report. We're really excited um, to, to sort of see what comes out of this discussion. It's great to virtually be here, and I thank the organizers for extending an invitation to us. As introduced, my name is Annie Dan Balelehuka, and I'm from the Online Safety Commission, also called the OSC. And by way of brief introduction, the commission was first is the first established agency dedicated to empowering Fijians to use the internet safely and responsibly. And we have two main functions um, amongst others. One is to advocate safe online habits, bringing our well-renowned Mula spirit to the digital world. And two, the commission provides a space for individuals to report online abuse, such as online bullying and image-based abuse. Um, and we find appropriate redress for those reports. We can appreciate the initial findings of this report as it focused on a particular set of parameters. And while the internet provides tools such as social media platforms to foster communities with like-minded and like-valued interactions, it's easy for us to see from the examples presented, especially of our three well-respected women politicians, how quickly we are more drawn to the vices of these tools, particularly when it comes to politics. However, aspiring po women politicians or elected women officials should not be discouraged to advocate for their issues that they believe in on these digital spaces. There's definitely great potential to add value to their offline communities by engaging with them online, especially during these more restricted physical interactions uh, or time period where we have lockdowns and containment. Although it is highly encouraged that before we fully engulf ourselves on these platforms, we take note of protection, 
protective measures as we would say perhaps if we're driving a vehicle. And you can find helpful tips on our website on how to protect your online space to be able to do that. And also social media companies like Facebook offer an array of resources freely accessible to individuals who are running for office or already elected officials. We recognize that there's a disparity between the access to technologies and understanding how to use the apps or devices safely. As pointed out by Mr. Quizzle, Facebook continues to be to draw the majority of our population, even almost straight down the middle between males and females. And even though in this particular monitoring exercise, they looked at more male public pages and more male politicians, we know and we're aware of the fact that women and girls are disproportionately impacted by online abuse. It's really important for us to recognize that these billion dollar companies such as Facebook want us to stay online, but much of the work to be safe and proactive require us as individuals who are using these digital platforms to bring our offline values, such as respect, collaboration, critical thinking, and even the Talanoi spirit, which we've seen a lot of on Twitter, to our online personas. Of course, there are, there will be digital ills that we cannot control. Some online users will choose to share undesirable content as we had seen yesterday. But where we feed our likes, shares, and comments ultimately shape our newsfeed. And these are the things that we can control. We think that there's great value in the lessons that we could learn from a report such as this, especially of how these particularly 12 women politicians were treated during the aggregated three-year period. As a regulator, we are often seen as only responsive. So the content would have already been shared, posted, or messaged, and then the individual has to report in order for the commission to act. But championing online safety habits is something that all of us can do in our own respective spaces, especially now with all of the lockdowns and containment zones. The OSC currently has a handful of online safety champions who let their family and friends know how they could be safe on the internet. And if you would like to join that, please feel free to contact us on our website, www.onlinesafetycommission.com, uh, but I could also put a message on here. We recognize that technology facilitated gender-based abuse, such as those that are expressed in this report, is not one dimensional. And the response must also be holistic. So as a country, we can cultivate a safer, more inclusive online environment for Fiji as a whole. And that takes fostering positive change in the spaces we're already engaged in. Thank you for your time. And I would really appreciate any questions that you have. I look forward to the more interactive um, aspect of the Zoom. Naka. Thank you. Um, we'll now hear from Losana. Um, hi everyone, uh, Nisambula and uh, welcome um, again um, and also um, Bulavinaka again from the uh, Nasori containment uh, area. Um, so for the benefit of those that uh, missed out on the introduction, uh, my name is Losana Tiraviravi. And I work for the Fiji Women's Rights Movement, and I'm the acting team leader for the Intergenerational Women's Leadership Program. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, sincerely thank uh, MIMO98 and uh, also International IDEA for coming up with, uh, with such an initiative and also providing wonderful and informative uh, presentation for, uh, that is really needed uh, in this uh, day and age. Um, and also particularly on what you have presented uh, from uh, uh, your presentation uh, today. 
um, it is rather unfortunate to see the reflection and behavior towards our women leaders. And that sort of contributes to why women take their time to come forward and also to even um, stand for election or be potential uh, candidates uh, because of these unforeseen challenges uh, that many women have to uh, read about um, and also see as well. Um, particularly, I will uh, talk about the, the organization. Um, so the Fiji Women's uh, Rights Movement has been a leading uh, national women's organization in promoting women's political participation. And uh, after Blarem was established in 1986 and extensively uh, promotes women in leadership um, and uh, promotes women in uh, leadership spaces, as well as encouraging prospective uh, women candidates towards uh, Fiji general's, uh, general elections. Um, from as far as 2006. So um, after Blarem has been um, involved uh, in this area for quite a long time, uh, recognizing the lack of uh, women's um, participation and voice in the democratization process post the political upheavals of 2000 and 2006, after Blarem engaged in collaborating with national women's organization that promoted women's political participation. And this would later build the Fiji Women's Forum, which came about in 2012. So the Fiji Women's Forum is one of the projects um, that after Blarem uh, engages in, and this began in 2012, um, which led to uh, bringing in four women's organizations to co-convene the Fiji Women's Forum. And uh, such work has been conducted in terms of promoting and building the capacity of uh, women in order to um, allow a space for women to participate uh, in national democratic processes. So between 2012 and 2020, the Fiji Women's Forum have conducted five national consultations, even conducted two uh, women in politics trainings, and uh, even had the opportunity to um, provide a learning exchange with the women members of parliament to uh, Timor Leste and also um, conducted uh, some of the work undertaken towards uh, democratization process and most importantly keeping women engaged and informed um, even to an extent of uh, providing a space of intergenerational national convening where the Fiji Women's Forum came together with the Fiji Young Women's Forum to discuss and talk about um, ways in which to promote women and young women's political participation. Um, and also in 2014, the Fiji Women's Forum conducted a public perception uh, survey in partnership with the International Women's Development Agency. Um, why I'm sharing this survey is really um, because of the context. It's very much uh, relevant as well. So the survey found the following results to be significant. Um, the majority of people in Fiji feel that women are underrepresented in government and then changing this would be beneficial to the nation as a whole. Um, people recognize that the qualifications and attributes of, women, uh, of uh, leadership are not unique to men, um, but are common in both uh, men and women. And conservative viewpoints that favor male leadership are a small but significant um, minority in certain demographics. And the strongest support for female leadership is found amongst um, women and young people. And so the findings also concluded that 17% of respondents would prefer to vote for women prior to the 2014 general election. So um, that is really sharing about um, that uh, survey, which I feel that is still very much relevant to this uh, context. And also um, with FWRM, we did an internal comparative analysis as well in terms of finding out how women fared through the elections for 2014 and 2018. Um, so out of this analysis, we still found that women still face the same sets of challenges, which is the ongoing attacks, um, cyberbullying, sex sexist and misogynistic comments on women MPs and particularly uh, women candidates uh, when they're preparing towards the election, uh, mainly on social media. And uh, further to that, a lot has been shared uh, by the presentation um, that has been given to us today. Um, I wouldn't really particularly want to elaborate on the, um, the women politicians that um, 
had their own experiences as well um, because I had the same um, I had sort of uh, prepared the same examples as well in terms of the three women politicians um, I think in the case of uh, read it or murder where one particular case where she had to comment in terms of the name that she was using, um, which she herself had to defend, um, had to defend in terms of why she was using uh, the name the Moda. And uh, this was in particularly to, um, to her being the custodian uh, uh, to her daughter. And uh, that was one of the cases in which uh, she had to uh, explain about herself, which um, which is really not uh, which is really not fair for women to keep explaining about things um, that people are uh, hounding about in terms of their personal uh, issues, rather than uh, really looking into what is the particular national interest. That the woman is really standing for in terms of her own um, uh, her own political uh, campaign towards the elections. Um, the other example uh, that has already been mentioned regarding uh, Linda Tambuya and um, her uh, dressing that had been uh, openly uh, um, commented in uh, Parliament. Um, for at the Blarem, we really uh, did raise an issue regarding why women have to be uh, have to undergo through that, um, and we feel that women should be treated equally. They should be free and safe from discrimination and violence in our communities, and most certainly in the workplace. And Fiji has a high incidence rate of workplace uh, harassment. So the Parliament, as the highest workplace in the country, is where one would least expect this appalling behaviour. And the shaming of a woman member of parliament for her choice of dress in parliament instead of focusing on issues of national interest really reflects widely on the negative attitudes towards women and the state of gender equality in Fiji. Um, and the other issue as well in regards to um, Lenor Rangerger Tambua's uh, uh, experience where um, she had to uh, face all those comments and uh, pub, um, de derogatory uh, remarks that was made against her. Um, but um, as we were monitoring uh, that as well on um, on the behavior of how uh, how people were engaging on social media, so there were generally uh, mixed um, responses as well that was happening. Uh, on social media that we were able to uh, also uh, notice. Um, so in all of these cases, people took to social media to make comments often vilifying the female uh, MP. And unfortunately, this sends a message to any upcoming candidates on what their experience would be like uh, should they enter the political uh, arena. So really, what has been the behavior and the environment that has been happening uh, online? Uh, really does reflect on how women um, are thinking about um, getting into uh, getting to be involved uh, politically, and uh, also a few things that um, I just want to uh, end my uh, discussion on is, uh, you know, women are already underrepresented in parliament and struggle against uh, pervasive discrimination and patriarchal norms of leadership. To be in this uh, to be in that space in the first place and they are elected leaders of parliament they are very much equal to their male colleagues and must be treated as such no matter their age gender and background it is integral uh, now more than ever to promote attitudes towards uh, women and which are cso's ngos and women's groups in fiji and the pacific and globally have continuously advocated lobbied and raised awareness on these issues but uninformed misogynistic comments by prominent members of society and elected leaders threaten the progress we have made and the efforts towards addressing it. The leaders of uh, Fiji must take responsibility to be informed of gender equality and condemn all forms of discrimination. It is everyone's responsibility as well to foster society that is free from violence and discrimination against women and girls. And um, 
Uh, moreover, our elected leaders in government really play a critical role and we must collectively denounce uh, misogyny in uh, Fiji. Thank you. Thank you, um, Lasana and Anne. Um, you can send your questions through via chat or raise your hands. Uh, before Anne leaves, there are two uh, questions via chat that have been put forward, three questions for Anne. Uh, the first question is from Roshika. Uh, she's asking if male and female pol politicians approach the commission's work to seek uh, accountability for online violence. And if so, what process has been undertaken by male and female politicians? And the second question is from Dylan. Um, he's asking if the commission itself can initiate an investigation that is in the public interest, or is it only capable of acting on complaints that have been filed with them? So if the commission can be proactive rather than wait for uh, uh, complaints to be filed. So you can, both are a bit related. So maybe you can take these two first and then I'll ask the third question. Okay. Um yeah, thank you for your questions. So in terms of male and female politicians accessing or lodging complaints with the commission, they're able to do so. Um, and there's, everybody sort of just goes through the same complaints process. You report to the commission, it's assessed for a certain amount of period to determine uh, what sort of online abuse you're, you are reporting. And then you're given um, a, and then it's sent out for legal opinion um, or it's done internally as well. And if it's found to be an offense listed under the Online Safety Act or um, the Crimes Decree, then it's most likely um, one of the referrals that we make to law enforcement. And so the complaints assessment process is really just to find the best, um, the best remedy for that particular situation. Um, and it also depends on the case itself and on the posts that people are referring to. But whether you're in a whether you're in public life or whether you are a private citizen, um, you're sort of afforded the same complaints process in terms of assessment because it's it's just so that we could tailor it to the particular complaint. Um, in terms of whether we proactively um, engage. In terms of our functions, there has to be a report made by the individual who's affected, and then we conduct our assessment and investigation. Otherwise, the commission does not actively monitor the digital space, but we do offer online safety tips that anybody who's online can, um, can help themselves to and be able to protect themselves. So I, um, just in terms of proactive measures for the commission. Um, we're mostly engaging on advocacy and education when it comes to online safety, and that's done through the three streams of community awareness programs, school engagements, and of course, just the verified Facebook page for OSC Fiji and um, the online safety website, which is onlinesafetycommission.com. Um, but there is a complaint scheme that everybody goes through, and referrals are made to law enforcement. So we cannot, unfortunately, at this moment, our function prevents us from, um, from launching uh, an investigation in the sense that we cannot arrest or question in that way, um, but it is referred to law enforcement. Um, thank you. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the, one of the questions was on, has any politician so far sought the assistance of the commission in terms of online violence that has been perpetuated against them? And have they been male or female or? So from off the top, I can think of only three. Um, those who are in public life and politicians included um, that have lodged directly with the OSC and um, 
they were then given their options for how they wanted to proceed with their complaint because um, we usually have to seek um, collaboration from the people that are lodging the complaints. So yes, um, those in public life, including politicians, have lodged reports with us. Okay. Um, the third question, uh, uh, Litya had asked a question which you have addressed on in terms of investigative processes. How do you, as the commission, assess the seriousness of a complaint that has been lodged? Are there certain tests that you follow to assess the seriousness? There's certain internal mechanisms that we use, um, and a majority of that is also reflected in how um, it's laid out for courts to be able to assess a matter. And so we do take into consideration how many times um, that individual has been uh, victimized or how many times that um, individual has been attacked online. We take into consideration the time frame. Um, there's different considerations for the type of person um, or how they're handling the situation. Um, there's also consideration to age, to the person's um, sex or gender, um, the person's occupation might even come into play, especially if it's um, posts that reflect back to their place of work. Um, and so I did want to mention that earlier in 2019, a lot of our reports, or at least 39%, um, which made up the major, which made up the majority of our 2019 reports, were defamatory in nature. And because that already has a, a system of civil litigation, that was not something that um, we could consider as the commission. And so it was um, then referred to the appropriate mechanisms that you could sought out. Thank you, Anne. Um, there's some questions to Rusto as well. Um, one question is, uh, what was the ratio of male uh, versus female in the study data that you've collected? Mm -hmm. And the second question is on Facebook groups that you identified or collected data from. Um, these groups actually have credibility issues as well. Um, how does the study uh, summarize um, uh, these against the political agenda that is in play as well? Um, given that all the female politicians that you've mentioned in your presentation were from the opposition, political parties? Um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, so perhaps I will uh, start with the first uh, question. So as I, as I mentioned, we looked uh, at uh, 17 public pages of, uh, of 12 women politicians and 28 public pages of 24 uh, male politicians. So, so indeed uh, the, the ratio there is tilted towards, uh, towards male uh, politicians uh, in terms of, 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 the, of the overall quantity. Uh, but I think what also came out from from the study, and, and here obviously, uh, I mean particularly when we when we looked at um, the content uh, on, uh, on 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 the on the media uh, on on the one media page or the public groups, uh, that in general uh, I think female politicians were less inclined to raise controversial issues uh, or openly criticize their political opponents in their fa Facebook posts. So that's why perhaps it generated uh, less uh, of, of this problematic content or reactions. I mean, I did mention that, uh, that uh, uh, you know, uh, also these other uh, statistics, which was that uh, in, in, in 35 cases, actually in the posts uh, of male politicians, I mean, we found this, this problematic content. So, so yes, but but uh, I, I I do recognize that uh, that the ratio was uh, was sort of tilted uh, towards uh, uh, you know towards male politicians and and I think one more perhaps interesting statistics was that uh, four times more problematic content uh, you know related to actually pages of, of male politicians so this was uh, 133 cases in comparison uh, with uh, with female uh, politicians which was. Uh, 32. So overall, and, and this came, uh, uh, as I already mentioned, in, in the results, um, at the end, uh, 
men were more subjected to online violence than, than women. Uh, uh, but again, uh, as I already mentioned, um, a great majority of the problematic comments uh, towards women politicians were in this uh, sexist uh, category, which, which I described uh, initially. And then as for the, uh, as for the second question, uh, related to, uh, to public groups. Um, and then obviously, uh, uh, you know, here, uh, I mean, I should say that uh, I'm not an expert on, 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 on local politics uh, here, but, uh, but basically we, uh, we, we looked at, um, you know, at, at, at all uh, uh, female politicians that actually had, uh, at the time of the study, these public uh, profiles, uh, public accounts on Facebook. So that was uh, something that uh, that was important for us, uh, particularly as mentioning uh, uh, that uh, we had access uh, to, to 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 data uh, uh, to public profiles and and public uh, public public groups. So so all. Uh, all uh, uh, female politicians uh, that uh, do have uh, accounts on Facebook uh, uh, and, 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 and are relevant uh, were actually uh, subject to the, to, re to the research. So in that sense, I don't think there was any, any, any uh, sort of um, uh, any preference uh, in terms of, you know, uh, that 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 would be only only opposition uh, politicians present in 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 the study. I mean, no, we did not uh, have that sort of, of uh, criteria. Uh, rather, it was uh, the ability to actually uh, ac access uh, the data, which, uh, as I mentioned, we 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 we, we can access data uh, on public accounts and public profiles. Okay, thank you. Um... I'll ask Roshika to unmute. She has a question while we go through the questions in the chat. Yes, Bula, everyone. Thank you all for the presentations. Um, just uh, one, um, one comment and a question, or both of them together. So you have acknowledged um, that uh, there, is a, there, there were more male politicians that were analyzed compared to um, female politicians, but this hasn't been taken into account in the analysis. And I think this should be taken into account in the final data analysis, otherwise the data is skewed. Um, the other thing that I wanted to ask was, um, what is the ethnic desegregation of the, poly of the people um, whose Facebooks um, that were analyzed? This would be a relevant um, and key variable, given that one of the indicators um, of measuring online violence is ethnic-based or racist attacks. Thank you. Uh, uh, maybe I can I respond uh, directly. Yes. Or, okay, okay. Sorry, I was uh, waiting for. Um, I, I think th these are. Uh, thank you very much. I mean, these are these are certainly uh, valid points. Uh, I think um, we will obviously um, sort of reflect on uh, on on this uh, uh, ethnicity uh, issue. I think. Uh, you know, this um, certainly, uh, I think, came out uh, from from the uh, from the research uh, that uh, uh, much of this uh, problematic content indeed was actually, uh, you know, based on 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 ethnicity. Uh, so I think that that's a very valid point. Uh, so at this stage, um, I do not have uh, some kind of sort of breakdown of that because that was not. Uh, uh, somehow, um, uh, you know, the the, the, the main um, sort of goal of, of the of the study, but but it came uh, quite uh, quite uh, you know it, it's quite visible from 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 the results uh, that that it, it featured rather high. So I think uh, I, I, I we, you know we 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 will look at uh, this sort of ratio as as you suggested. And as for the first. Uh, as for the first uh, comment, um, uh, yes, I think you have a point, um, and and um, you know this was uh, 
again uh, for us it was it was a, um, a, a sort of a pilot uh, research and and uh, we are we we we, have, we recognize that that we we have uh, some limitations uh, and and I think this is generally when you look at the research which is done uh, on Facebook. Uh, uh, it, it, it is really uh, the, the access to data, which is which is the most uh, most uh, uh, problematic nowadays, and and um, and so uh, in that sense, uh, obviously, as I mentioned before, I mean we 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 were able to access, uh, and particularly uh, one one last thing to mention is that uh, all this research. Uh, was done retro retroactively, or uh, so. So we we were looking at the historic uh, data, historic periods, uh, which I think should be also uh, mentioned. Uh, and so um, yes, we we, we could uh, we could basically research the data that we had uh, our, uh, at our disposal. But uh, but I think we we did take that into into consideration um, because uh, th this is why we had the qualitative. Uh, criteria of the assessment and 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 we were basically able to to look at this uh, uh, you know from that perspective uh, which which at, at the end of the day um, I think uh, what, what matters is really looking at at the at this also at this qualitative criteria and the type of uh, treatment uh, that uh, that female politicians uh, uh, are subjected to, and 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 in that I think the data is actually quite valid, you know, because it sort of really proves uh, that uh, that while uh, perhaps in terms of quantity, uh, it's uh, the, the 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 content is 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 really tilted towards male uh, politicians, but in terms of when you dive into the data and when you look at uh, those uh, sort of criteria, then you see appearances uh, which i think are very problematic of uh, of 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 that type of um, language you know which is uh, which is uh, sexist which is stereotyping which is uh, which is basically looking at the at the appearance rather than at the at the at the content of 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 uh, of, of the you know of of of, of what these politicians uh, are offering so so but yeah i take that note and 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 again uh, you know, it, the the main reason was basically the fact that this was um, uh, this was history historical data that we looked at, and uh, and the 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 second criteria was the actual existence of uh, of the accounts, uh, which uh, which uh, which basically we identified at the very beginning. Um, thank you, Rusto. Um, maybe Losana can jump into this answering this question as well with Rusto. Um, this is from Victor. Uh, he's asking, uh, at what point do we mortgage our free speech in our bid to commit to acceptable speech? So basically asking the question around, is there a fine line between criticism of a politician and committing forms of online violence? And um, maybe from your interna international experience, and Losana can maybe come in from her extensive engagement within the women's rights feminist movements. Mm -hmm. um, who should go first? Uh, maybe, maybe ladies first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, either or. Losana, do you want to go take this question first? Yes. Um, um, okay. Um, Will be, uh, basically, it's uh, it's clear uh, in terms of really looking at the uh, issues that are uh, campaigning on, rather than um, you know uh, you know when you make a comment that is more personal, it's really building on the um, commenting really on the on the personal issues of uh, of a woman candidate or the women uh, politician, um, but when it's about looking at what is really the um, the issues around national development or what the woman is really um, campaigning on or talking about um, that is definitely uh, clear from my point of view uh, between what is a fine line of 
what you comment on um, in regards to that. Yes, uh, so I would uh, basically, and thanks a lot for this. I think this is a very important question uh, because obviously uh, we do not want to uh, stifle uh, the free speech uh, on one side. On the other side, uh, it's quite um, <clears throat> visible that, um, you know, when I look at uh, the experience from other countries as well, that uh, it is not enough uh, to leave this up to uh, these big, um, uh, you know, the, these big social media uh, platforms. Uh, so I don't think that uh, it's enough to have um, uh, just their community standards here. I think, uh, particularly when it comes to issues um, such as uh, such as hate speech or uh, you know uh, this type of problematic content. I think we need to have uh, clear rules. Uh, that apply both uh, to offline and online environment. And, and, and what, what is more is actually that we also need uh, uh, to have, uh, uh, you know, the, the implementation of these rules, uh, which, which uh, again, uh, is, is, uh, is problematic because of the global nature of, 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 of internet and, and, and global nature of these big uh, players. Uh, so uh, I think, uh, you know, just, without perhaps uh, going into too much details, but I think in general, uh, I think uh, we, we should, uh, whatever uh, is, uh, is in, in, in place when it comes to offline limits of free speech uh, should be implemented also online. We should not uh, feel that, uh, that there is impunity, you know, that, uh, you know, we, we could make, uh, uh, that, that we are not visible on the internet, I think it's, it's, it's extremely important that, uh, that there is this sort of responsibility. And also, uh, you know, this uh, comes with another very important point to make, which is basically digital media literacy, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, we are uh, able uh, to, to, to sort of, uh, um, you know, to, 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 uh, to, to have some kind of, uh, 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 you know uh, that, that that we are actually not making such uh, such comments, and that that we understand that that words could actually hurt, and 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 I think this is extremely important for people to realize uh, when it comes to to online world. Thank you. Um, there are two related questions uh, by Nilesh and Dylan, um, asking about the research methods. Um, uh, did your research actually take into account that uh, the comments and the posts that you extracted from these public uh, domain, uh, public Facebook domains, um, did you try to distinguish between we, which are genuine accounts and which are fake or troll accounts? Mm -hmm. And Nilesh is going a step further asking if there was any linkages that you tried to make between certain troll accounts and going back to political parties because there were certain parties that have you know, dedicated quite a lot of um, money towards online forms of campaigning as well in Fiji. Mm -hmm. now that's an excellent point. And uh, that's one reason why we looked also at this, uh, at this network mapping. Um, but uh, it's also, I have to say that uh, this was uh, applied uh, uh, by the end of, of the research. I mean, we, we did not, uh, uh, you know, we did not have that capacity at the beginning. Um, we are sort of developing this this capacity uh, these days uh, to to sort of uh, sort of enhance our methodology uh, to uh, to be able to identify uh, you know these type of uh, amplifiers uh, which are uh, perhaps inauthentic. So uh, you know basically talking of, of, of bots or fake accounts, which, which could actually spread uh, such content. And, and then of course, uh, one thing that is very common uh, these days uh, um, is, is actually that political parties are indeed employing trolls, you know, that actually uh, work uh, and, and, and try to, uh, to sort of uh, push a certain content. Uh, uh, the simple uh, response is no. We, we did not. Uh, uh, we did not actually uh, 
look into the uh, whether uh, those uh, comments were done by 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 trolls or you know who are those uh, people who are behind this uh, the goal of this study was really uh, first of all look at the the content um, and 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 see whether there is the the presence of of this problematic content and then uh, but 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 definitely i i agree that uh, uh, deep, deeper analysis of uh, uh, perhaps looking at, uh, at those, uh, you know, who are maybe the, the, the most obvious perpetrators uh, would, would probably be very interesting and, and see, you know, the, the genuity, I mean, to what extent these are actually genuine accounts or, uh, you know, whether this is the repetition of the same uh, type of, uh, of, 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 of persons who are uh, commenting. I mean, we did see uh, let's say uh, manually uh, that there were basically uh, clearly some commenters uh, who who repeatedly uh, were using this problematic uh, language, but no, we did not dive in deeper into into this, and and we did not try to sort of uh, verify whether these are authentic or inauthentic uh, players. Um, thank you for that. Um, there's another question, Rosto, on the methods and the conclusions that you presented. Um, the first one is just a comment that uh, the ratio of posts that you have extracted in terms of uh, looking at male and female political politicians accounts is quite important uh, factor, plays a huge factor that Roshik has alluded to as well in drawing up conclusions. Um, the second one is that um, did you find any instances of uh, online violence perpetuated against uh, female candidates or female um, politicians or MPs from the ruling party as well? Because um, there are certain, like Roshik had mentioned, certain nuances of uh, ethnicity, age, socioeconomic status that does play a role in uh, how people tend to attack female politicians or politicians in general as well. So where there are women from the ruling party, the Fiji first, um, like Rosie Akbar, Pramila Kumar, that you know face some form of online balance or trolling. Uh, I will start with the second part of the question. And um, uh, you know, I, I think we, we we included uh, those uh, those politicians and and uh, we we i think we came across uh, some examples now i cannot remember uh, out of my uh, top of my head i mean clearly those three cases which i mentioned in the presentations were clearly the most prominent ones but uh, definitely uh, and i will uh, perhaps make this as, as some kind of announcement uh, look for the report which is upcoming uh, uh, which is upcoming uh, shortly. Um, you know, we are almost at the very final stage of this, uh, and and uh, we will make sure that uh, that uh, these cases uh, sort of will be will be mentioned there as well. Uh, so that's uh, for this. And for the for the comment on the ratio. Um, oh, sure. Sorry, um, sorry, Rasta. Let me let me just interject and clarify further on that first comment. Mm -hmm. Um, sure. We we certainly included uh, those two politicians that were mentioned, and in fact, we we made sure that all female politicians from any party to be included, as long as they have an active Facebook page, because otherwise we we won't be able to monitor. Thanks. Exactly, which which is something that I already mentioned, and and again, there was. Uh, I mean, this was not uh, any uh, sort of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, criteria of, of, of choosing or not choosing. Uh, you know, we, we did not actually look at, uh, at um, you know, the, the actual uh, sort of, uh, I mean, who, who are these politicians representing? I mean, we were really, uh, for us, the goal was really look at, uh, uh, you know, the, the cross-section of political uh, sort of environment and 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 so again the the the, the I will repeat uh, repeat it that the the main criteria was that uh, 
uh, that uh, these politicians, as, as, as Avi mentioned, had active accounts. And, and that was uh, important, uh, obviously, because otherwise we wouldn't uh, be able to have access uh, to these data. I mean, I take uh, that uh, point about the, the, you know, the ratio, uh, but again, I think here, uh, what is what is uh, most important is is really um, you know looking at uh, at the qualitative uh, criteria and and so uh, you know you can have um, uh, you can have um, you know uh, I mean the 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 the, the fact that uh, you know that we, what 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 came out uh, of of the study that uh, that we had uh, perhaps uh, male politicians facing. Uh, uh, more uh, online violence was mainly because we we looked at these uh, different categories and 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 um, and and we felt that uh, you know when 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 doing this research it is important not only to look at uh, you know um, I don't know sexist language but 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 we, we felt that it, it's really important to look at uh, these other aspects uh, where perhaps uh, you know uh, it was it was clear that uh, that uh, you know the the the, the male politicians were involved in more controversial uh, sort of um, issues and 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 perhaps that generated more responses uh, from from those commenters and but uh, but that should not uh, somehow um, you know i think we, we can clearly see from the data that uh, that uh, the, the 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 presence of the problematic content is there it doesn't really matter if it's uh, if it's uh, 133 cases or or 32 cases. There shouldn't be any case, uh, if I can put it this way. So yes, uh, thanks for uh, thanks for these comments about about the ratio. Uh, but but here, I think the the most important fact is that uh, that uh, you know this problematic content is present there, and 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 then it's it's important to dive in. And and here again. Uh, you know what I what I see as the main finding coming out of the the research is that uh, uh, that uh, these these problematic comments uh, towards uh, women politicians are in the sexist category, and we did not find. Uh, I mean, we looked at the same category also for for male politicians, but uh, but there was uh, but we did not see any any content uh, in that sense. Uh, yeah, so so we have to understand obviously the data in in the complexity but uh from my perspective the the ratio uh, is not so so important as you know when when you look at the actual categories and 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 and, and what uh, what we found uh, so so if um maybe uh, sorry for a long response but uh, but i felt it was important to explain this Thank you, Rasto. Um, are there any more questions before we end this webinar? I'll probably just pose a question to Losana, given that uh, there is this research that is coming out soon to be published. And there was another research that was done by the National Democratic Institute, uh, funded by USAID, looking at uh, violence against female politicians in Fiji and PNG and Solomons, I think. So, Lasana, uh, just what what can the women's organizations or feminist organizations, uh, what role do they play in ensuring that online forms of violence, and in Fiji, we've seen that online forms of violence does tend to reflect, and as you've mentioned, the offline sort of um, realities that women face. So is there something that is afoot in the, for the upcoming 2022 elections that you know, feminist or women's organizations can do to raise awareness around you know, how to engage in a way that is respectful, how to identify you know, sexist and uh, sexist tones that is used online and how to better engage with female politicians online? Um, thank you. Um, so for the women's uh, organization and one of the things as well that I wanted to uh, also uh, raise is that uh, as much um, as uh, 
what the women's organization are doing and also the feminist uh, organizations are doing in terms of building the capacity of women um, and really giving them all the tools and the resources. It's the external factors that at times we cannot control. Um, we have and we are planning to inbuild um, whatever information that uh, we have received and especially with um, um, with these uh, ongoing uh, issues around women having to face this type of uh, violence online. And uh, this is generally something that uh, we are working towards um, through the Fiji Women's Forum in planning towards um, what are some of the things that we can generate in terms of um, engaging with women that are planning to contest um, for the next elections. So plans are still underway. And uh, yes, this uh, really has come in a very timely manner as well, where the women's organization will now start to um, really inbuilt and uh, really prepare the women. Um, but it's really the external factors that is beyond our control um, that we, women themselves have to deal with. Uh, whether it's online or offline. We can offer so much as we can in terms of building the capacity to be, um, to be independent, to, uh, to also really um, stand and find their footing as well when it comes to engaging in the community. Um, but then again, these are some of the things that we really cannot control. Um, and also, as I had already mentioned, that uh, given that there are really multiple factors as well, uh, with our community and our society being very patriarchal, um, again, this is a fight that uh, is still ongoing. Um, and uh, yeah, from the women's organization, it's, uh, it's really just doing our very best in terms of engaging with the women and uh, making sure that um, the field out there is safe for them uh, to participate in. Thank you, Manuela. Um, are there any more questions uh, that you'd like to ask or any comments you'd like to make? Uh, we've been told that the report will be released sometime in the second half of the year, after early June of the first half towards the end. Um, any more questions? You can raise your hand, use the raise the hand emoji to... I mean, we have Roshika Deo who stood for 2014 elections and there was stuff that she faced online and we have Lenora with us. If they'd like to share some of their own experiences. Uh, in particular, highlight some of the things that maybe some strategies, coping strategies that they've used or things that maybe the report has not highlighted. If you'd like to talk. I think I'll just add something as well in terms of um, uh, the case around Linda was also that a lot of um, Linda Tambuya's case, a lot of uh, things that were said offline were from her party members as well. So her own party members were questioning a lot of things around, you know, her modern characteristics or the modern ways in which she was dressing and all that stuff, which perpetuated online through certain types of discussions around what an Indigenous woman in parliament, you know, should wear or shouldn't wear, how he or she should talk as well. So a lot of politicians, even from the government side, did perpetuate a lot of um, questionable, um, made a lot of questionable statements around that perpetuated a lot of online sort of conversations and violence and questionable behavior. Um, um, yes, yeah, Romitesh, if I can um, just add a couple of comments, I won't be very long. Um, I just wanted to say one of the things that I noticed from the findings um, of this uh, um, scoping research was that uh, how different it is to the 2014 um, uh, interaction of the, you know, interaction of people on social media with 
uh, female politicians. Um, there has been a there has been a lot of changes, um, and I think one of uh, the reasons uh, we see um, changes now in terms of how people um, react to uh, female politicians is because there has been a lot of uh, community education and awareness being done from 2014 to the 2000. 18 um, till now and it's carrying on and the other thing is also in terms of uh, um, in terms of um, uh, the affiliation of the female politicians I think that uh, if one is associated with a party structure there's some level of protection um, some level of political and social capital of the party that results in the protection of the female politician so I think that is one factor. Um, the other is the kind of issues that uh, you know is part of your manifesto and agenda that also results in uh, um, how the public or how social media users react. So if if it's a lot of status quo, um, um, status quo um, campaigning, then there's less likely to be retaliation. Whereas if you're going against the status quo, you'll see a, a lot more higher and a lot more intense and a lot more violent reaction. And not only online, it also um, it also manifests offline in different spaces and in different ways, um, and the and and also your social status. So, for instance, if you belong to a chiefly family, or if you come from a political dynasty, or if uh, you know you have a um, you know again the party backing and so forth, this all of these variables impact. Um, you know, the way a female politician, um, you know, is looked at how her, how they, the, com how communities, the public uh, react and interact with. So I think, uh, you know, there's a lot more nuanced discussion that needs to be had around this issue. And that's why for me, the disaggregation of the data is so important because it adds to that nuance, um, given, uh, you know, the complexity of our society and our culture. Um, thanks, Ramitesh. Thank you very much. Um, if there's no more questions or comments from anyone here, we might um, come to a close. So thank you very much to uh, everyone for joining in on a rainy Suva afternoon. Uh, thank you for Rasto for joining in early in the morning. Um, and to um, Andan and Losana for coming in uh, and providing their insights. And thank you for everyone. And keep a lookout for International Ideas upcoming webinars. Have a good afternoon. Stay safe. And we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Thank you.